Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you my complete review of CyberGhost 6 as of the middle of 2017. So CyberGhost is a VPN service uh, that has apps that are on each of the major systems out there. So uh, Windows, as you can see I'm using right now, Android, iPhone, um, Mac, and you can even use it on Linux, uh, but to use the Linux, you do have to do some manual settings, but it's not too bad. I've done it before. Um, and the idea behind CyberGhost is you log into this VPN service, and VPN is Virtual Private Network, if you don't already know, um, which basically means that your internet traffic is going to be securely protected behind their servers. So it hides your IP, um, it encrypts some of the data, makes it a lot harder to get hacked, um, and it allows you to basically uh, make it so that it's like you're in any region of the world where in reality you could be in a completely different uh, country or state. So, so one of the best typical uses for VPN is going to be to get around blocks that may be uh, occurring at the ISP level or the online service levels, things like Spotify, where you have to be in certain countries in order to use it. And then if you exit the country, you can no longer access it. Um, you can get around that with CyberGhost. And uh, you don't have to use these tools over here where it's unblock streaming or unblock basic websites. Um, those will kind of get you guaranteed unlocks on anything. But usually if you just surf anonymously, as long as you choose one of the countries that um, actually allows you to use those services, uh, you'll be fine to use that instead. So all of these options usually work for it. But if you are looking to uh, unblock something very specific, um, let's say YouTube or something like that, then uh, going here and selecting one of those will kind of get you guaranteed access if you don't want to have to worry about selecting a server for yourself. So to talk more about the free version of CyberGhost, how are you being limited when you use CyberGhost free? Um, it's in a couple ways. First off, the main thing is that you have to wait in a queue in order to connect to CyberGhost, which is totally reasonable. You're using the free servers, so if their services are basically being used by too many people initially, you have to wait for a few minutes in order to connect. But it's really not that bad at all. You're not capped on how much data you can use through the free version. So effectively, you have unlimited uh, streaming or downloads. Um, now, the second way is that I think uh, you can't use the Linux version, uh, basically the a kind of third-party mm -hmm. settings where you take the open VPN settings and you put it into um, just like the Linux network connections uh, unless you're on the premium service because you have to actually uh, have some of those premium slots in order to use that but if you're just trying to use it on Windows or Android or iPhone uh, you'll totally be able to get on without even signing up for an account so it works really good for most people right there immediately um, the other thing uh, is of course you're limited on some of the servers you have to use the free service as opposed to the premium service and i think on the android app still um you end up getting automatically assigned a server but that's not usually too big of a deal um because you're still hidden behind the vpn and it's still free so uh when you do have the premium version of CyberGhost, you get to select your servers at all time um and of course you can go pu uh, put in the account settings like uh, what it is actually is on the CyberGhost settings page, you attach devices to your account. And then with those devices, you can log into the premium services. So for the most part, what CyberGhost comes down to is these six options here, as long as you're using the app rather than a direct VPN connection. Um, surf anonymously is uh, just the automatic setup where you want to surf the web uh, without people having your IP. And there's a lot of overlap between these options because like if you go to the Torrent Anonymously profile, you're still behind the VPN, you're still on an anonymous address. Um, but uh, with Torrent Anonymously, it will specifically choose out a server that allows torrenting. Not every of the servers um, allow you to do torrents through them. So for instance, if we go over to search uh, Surf Anonymously, you can choose a country, um, launch options to choose a, a browser to automatically launch if you want that if you don't you can go ahead and hit don't launch and I like to just check all of these uh, extra features which uh, some of them might not be in the free version 
Um, but it's like, hey, if it's there, why wouldn't you want it? Do you want extra speed? Hmm, nah, hard choice. Yeah, I think I do. Do you want it to block advertisements or online tracking? It's like, yes, 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 yes. I, I mean, at least that's my opinion. And then Torrent Anonymously, it's uh, similar. Um, where specifically it will uh, launch an additional program. I guess that's one of the other differences. Uh, here you would just choose your torrenting program, and when you bump, when you launch into the uh, profile, it's going to launch your torrenting app. And with Search Anonymously, it can launch your browser. Uh, but the torrent anonymously does guarantee you're on a torrenting server. Uh, then if you want total control over your connection, you, you see here that it doesn't let you really pick a server. But if you go to Choose My Server, then you can select from any of the servers in any countries. Uh, and I, I think this is also a premium only service. Um, but yeah, you basically have access to every server. You can see a ping to that server uh, and you can just kind of pick out the ones you like and store them so that they'll show up here in favorites if you use it often. Um, like for instance here, I could go down here and uh, store this one in Toronto because it has a slightly lower ping. Um, and you can also see the user load and whether or not it allows taunting. So for those who just want to pick out precise servers, that's a good option. Also, um, right now I have the torrent category over here. There's, a, there's more servers than that. So uh, you can see some of the servers don't have torrenting enabled. And you can also see which servers are most empty. Uh, apparently it's Iceland right now. Uh, most crowded servers, uh, the fastest servers, which is going to be uh, the ones that have the lowest ping to your relative location. Um, and then extra features over here. Ah, okay. I didn't actually see this tab before, but you can go ahead and check all of these things, uh, just like I would do with automatic surfing. And, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you want things like ad blocking? Um, protect Wi-Fi. The idea here is that, um, whenever you connect to a certain network, it's going to automatically go ahead and, uh, launch into CyberGhost with VPN um, settings. So it's kind of like, oh, you're on this network, so automatically protect, automatically launch into that VPN. And I guess the idea behind having this set up where you always protect when you're on a certain network is that uh, you don't have to worry about really launching CyberGhost. As long as you have CyberGhost, start with the computer, and then you're on that network, it's always going to protect, which means it's always going to go ahead and log on to that specific uh, setup for CyberGhost, which is Good. I mean, that's probably something you want. And then uh, back over here, unblock streaming and unblock basic websites. It's not really anything dramatically different, but it's uh, kind of figuring out for you which servers are best with the different tools that you want to use. So I imagine if we go over here, uh, we can find one for Spotify. So what countries allow Spotify? Uh, basically the United States, right? So um, in order to use Spotify, Unless you're on the premium version, you have to be in the U.S., so you want to be in the U.S., so that's why you would launch the Spotify profile. And yeah, you could just connect to a U.S. server, but um, this makes it easier for you. You don't have to know which uh, services are allowed in which countries. You can just kind of go there. Um, and now you can see uh, YouTube options. I mean, I think YouTube is permitted in pretty much any country, but... Um, yeah, that's basically the idea there. You can get guaranteed ability to connect to these different uh, servers. And then in Unblock Basic Websites, it's the same kind of thing, except this is going to be more than just uh, video streaming services. So uh, going to sites like WikiLeaks um, or WordPress or Google, Facebook, if you're having trouble connecting to any of those big sites, then these profiles may be useful for you. Uh, though in most cases, I would say um, if you just do basically a default profile, it's probably going to work anyway. Um, but with all six of these tools, they can kind of help get you customized settings for exactly what you're trying to do. But at the end of the day, really, you're just connecting to a VPN. You're getting the anonymous IP. You're getting uh, unblocked access to whichever site or service you're trying to use. Um, and it's enhancing your online security by uh, encrypting your so a couple more things I want to mention about CyberGhost 6. If we go over here to settings, uh, we can customize some stuff. So if you want CyberGhost to automatically run as system startup, you can check that. You can choose which uh, profile it's going to automatically try to go into. So for instance, torrent anonymously 
Um, you can also run the beta version um, at all times just by having install beta updates checked. You can select the language of which they're mostly European. Um, you can set up exceptions to allow a service uh, access to your computer to transmit and receive data without having to go through CyberGhost. Um, you can add a proxy to combine that with CyberGhost, basically bounce your information to another server before it goes through CyberGhost. Um, you can check TCP instead of UDP connections if you want, um, probably not needed for most people. Um, and over here at the Wi-Fi tab, if you're connecting to multiple networks with your device, then uh, you can have different settings for each, um, each of those Wi-Fi connections over here. And you can say whether it's going to always protect by default or if it's going to ask. I'd probably leave it at ask. And then uh, app protection for specific apps. Uh, if you're using an app and you want it to launch a specific profile, like let's say we had a torrenting app and we wanted to always uh, launch a profile when we use that app, and you would add an app here, connect it with a profile of choice, and then down there, as long as you have CyberGhost running on your computer, it will always switch to that profile when you launch that app. Um, kind of ensuring that you're always behind CyberGhost when you need to be behind CyberGhost. So that's pretty much all there is to CyberGhost. I do want to say that as I've been using CyberGhost, I've noticed that the speeds have been very good. Um, current internet connection of mine can go to several megabytes per second, and I can get the full speed through CyberGhost at that, so that's a really good thing to have full speed and to not be slowed down like uh, with the Tor browser or something like that. So with all that information in mind, I do have links to try out CyberGhost for free down below. Uh, there's really no obligation, and if you decide you like it, you can always upgrade to a premium account later. But in any case, thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I hope you found this 2017 review slash tutorial on CyberGhosts to be helpful. So until my next video, I'll see you guys then.